So is Canada behind or, or ahead? Th these are tough measurements because it depends what you're, you're looking at. I think in the municipal space, actually Canada is pretty far you know, in, in a leadership group. Um, if you look at the United States, there's a handful of cities, but given their size, you know, and our size, you'd expect many, many more if they were kind of in the same state as us. So, so on, on that front, actually, I think we have a pretty good leadership group there. Um, on the federal level, uh, I would say, you know, out of all the countries in the world, <laughs> many, many of them are not doing it. I don't think China or North Korea are looking to create open data portals anytime soon, and many governments in Africa are not looking at this either. But if you look at the kind of Commonwealth countries or, or the G8, G7 countries, I mean, the United States and the United Kingdom have been very aggressive and very explicit about open data policies and thinking about this, and our not only have a policy infrastructure in place, but you know, they have data portals and they have people who've been starting to work it. Uh, you know, apps for uh, development's already been launched. The military's running an apps competition internally. Uh, they're thinking very strategically about how they're using information and how they're using software in a way that I don't even begin to see happening at the federal level. So I'd say we're already at least two years behind in Canada at the federal level and run real risks of slipping further behind. One of the real dangers is uh, we begin to think of open data as something new. I actually think open data is an incredibly old idea. Uh, and so the only thing that's really changed is the format of the data. But if you think of what open data really means, it's about how do we share the information of government. Well, people have always wanted information, have always sought for it. And it used to be that you know, nailing, nailing a piece of paper to the doors of parliament, that was what disclosure meant. And then, of course, you know, newspapers came along, and disclosure meant you know, there'd be articles written in the newspaper, and then we got press releases. And now, of course, I mean, you have to remember there was a time when having a website for government was a radical and crazy idea and that nobody would ever do this. And now you can't imagine a government agency existing without a website because that's what disclosure now meant. All we're saying in the open data front is disclosure now means not just publishing something in HTML or, or in, a, in a piece of paper that I have to go and read somewhere. It also means publishing it in machine-readable format so that I can download it to my computer and I can look and analyze it at it myself because that's what people have always wanted to do with data. It's just the tools have become more sophisticated and the opportunity actually to share the data and do something with it has gotten cheaper. So there's, there's much more we could do to innovate and be creative. So the, the question for me is, rather than thinking of this as a new problem, can't we just think of this as an old problem that we're just adding a new layer on top of? You know, people talk about things like security and privacy. I actually think that we already have legislation that guides us around what we're allowed to disclose and what we're not allowed to disclose. So those types of challenges don't, in my mind, are not front and center. Um, the bigger obstacles for me are is what we choose to how we choose to license information. Um, so, in the city of Vancouver, has a, a has a license for how you're allowed to use the information. It's very, very open. It tries to be as free as possible. Let people do things. I actually, you know, if you look in the U.S., there are many jurisdictions where they have no license at all because it's a public asset and you should just be allowed to use it. Um, so getting us aligned around the right license, I think, is going to be a, is an obstacle for some places because lawyers often become um, overly concerned or their leaders allow the lawyers to lead. And so it becomes about managing risk rather than engaging the opportunity. So like, that's one big obstacle. The bigger obstacle, though, I think is um, most cities don't actually know what they know. And most governments don't even know what they know. That governments collect a huge amount of information. And it's all scattered on small computers and servers and all this stuff all over the place. And, and many of them don't even know where it is. And so actually having a data governance model becomes important. So we need our governments to treat data like a strategic asset, one that they're going to use more effectively, but wherever possible they're going to share with the public so the public can use it uh, and do great things, whether that's NGOs or business or private citizens. I think this is an interesting question. Um, it doesn't need to be top down. I, that certainly can help. But it's not the only path to getting to open data. You, you look at the city of Nanaimo, uh, they've been sharing a lot of data for a, a number of years now, especially GIS data, long before anybody else was thinking about this stuff. And there's been no city council motion passed on this. There's been no, for them it was, the city has asked us to share information with the public as efficiently and effectively as possible. And we saw that and we said, well, the most effective way to do that is to do this. Um, and in fact, actually, the city did want them also to share internally as effectively as possible. And they said, well, we might as well have a data portal for internally. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be sharing with the public as well. So there, there was, I, I don't think there was political leadership in Nanaimo to do this. In fact, instead, it was um, IT people saying, uh, what is the best practice for doing this? And saying, this, well, it's this. It's that we've got to create a portal to serve it internally and externally. And that's what we need to do. Same in the city of Edmonton. city of Edmonton looked around and said, other people are doing this. They said, we don't need legislation to do this. Uh, we've already been tasked to do this by our council. So we're simply executing on the orders that we've already been given. 
Um, and to be fair, almost every level of government already shares a ton of data. They just don't do it in machine readable format. So they want to give it to you, but they want to give it to you in a format that's kind of functionally useless. So why not just, I don't think you need uh, an order from your political leaders in order to take data that you're already sharing in a PDF or in a closed format and to make it open that people can use. So, th so I'm not convinced that the political leadership model is the only one. Now, in some jurisdictions, it may be necessary. And certainly, that's the course that you know, Vancouver and Toronto have taken. Uh, so I, I think there's just a diversity of strategies. So do I want to see data sets available in open standards? Absolutely. That said, though, I also want the data to be available in default standards. So for example, do I want text documents to be, or do I want um, spreadsheets to be available in comma-separated values, CSV files? Definitely. But should they also be available in Excel? If the city has, it already has them in Excel, should they share them? Absolutely. There's a lot of people who use Excel. Let's, like, let's make it easy for people. So, so when it comes to standards, I'd love to see more open standards used because I think actually that's important and it's in the city or in government's interest to, it, to uh, push open standards. But let's also use standards that everybody's using if there's default standards. Now, with creating common standards, so do we release the data in the similar structure as everybody else? Um, my big fear is that if we begin to open that can of worms, um, we're going to spend the next 10 years figuring out how we're going to do open data. Um, do we need to get there? Absolutely. Should that stop us from moving and acting right now? Definitely not. Um, I think there's a ton that cities can put out there um, that will be immediately of use to citizens. And if we find that the, the pickup is enormous, then let's begin, to, let, let's begin to move to some common standards around how we share this data. The, the one area where I would push cities to move to the common standards the, the quickest would be around licenses. Because there, you know, if a developer wants to create an application to help citizens out, much better that they have one single license for all of the data sets they might be grabbing from across the country. Makes their lives a whole lot easier, gives them a lot more security, also gives their end users more security. And I do know that there's some talk about doing that. You know, if you look at all three levels of government and kind of where things are at, um, the most action, obviously, I think everybody knows, is at the municipal level here. You have several cities that are kind of moving pretty quickly in this space. So uh, Vancouver, obviously, uh, you know, very, had the first data portal up and running. Uh, Toronto, very, very early as well. Now Edmonton, um, Ottawa also kind of coming along. And actually, it would be unfair of me to say, uh, not mention Nanaimo, which has been doing a lot of work in open data for a very, very long time now as well. Um, and I'm hearing rumors of other cities that are starting to merge as well. So, so in this kind of, I think in the country right now, the municipal actors are the ones who are kind of the most forward looking on, the, on this front. Um, federally, uh, I, I don't really know where they stand. I'm beginning to hear some different things. I think it's very interesting. Uh, there was a parliamentary report written two weeks ago uh, that talked about open data. Clearly the conversation is starting to change. I think people are looking to the south of the United States and then they're looking uh, you know, east towards the United Kingdom and they're kind of seeing what's going on there. So growing interest. Um, I'm beginning to hear a little bit of some talk about open data from some different people beginning to contemplate it. I think it's too early to tell uh, when anything will happen. And the provincial level is much more scattered. Um, in, Br in British Columbia, there actually is open data in, in the GIS sense uh, that's been up and been sharing for a couple of years now. Um, none of the other provinces I know have a coherent strategy around this um, at the moment. And, and I think some of them are beginning to think of it and some of it's not even hit their radar yet.